iPhone 17 models boast enhanced battery life compared to their predecessors, with the iPhone 17 Pro Max offering the most optimal experience. Apple's largest iPhone is equipped with an even bigger battery cell than earlier models, particularly in the eSIM-only version. The company has effectively utilized the space that was previously occupied by the physical SIM card to increase the battery size. However, early tests have indicated that the liquid glass design in iOS 26 drains the battery significantly faster than iOS 18. A recent comparison revealed that an iPhone 16 Pro Max would consume 13% of its battery during routine tasks, such as accessing the notification center, opening and closing apps, scrolling, and unlocking the device. In contrast, the same handset used only 1% of its energy for these operations while running iOS 18. This leads us to a different battery test involving the iPhone 17 Pro Max and iOS 26. A Reddit user, MarianBerryDeer6170, conducted a test that demonstrates how liquid glass acts as a crazy battery nightmare on the new device. T. His experiment followed the user's experience with the iOS 26 beta on the iPhone 15 Pro Max, which resulted in significant heat and power consumption. The Redditor detailed how much power various operations consume on the iPhone 17 Pro Max and noted that reducing the transparency setting does not decrease power usage. He also found that the battery life of the iPhone 17 Pro Max can be significantly extended, although most consumers may not find the workaround appealing. Low power mode greatly enhances the iPhone 17 Pro Max's battery life. The Redditor's experiment entails limiting charging to 80% and completing a set of operations on the iPhone 17 Pro Max while it's attached to a charger, with a power meter documenting the energy drain in real time. The test illustrates how much electricity the iPhone 17 Pro Max would draw for various actions. The video shown also shows that utilizing clear icons in iOS 26 substantially increases the battery draw. Surprisingly, enabling the reduced transparency mode consumes up to 1 watt extra for all the actions. Low power mode seems to be the only fix that reduces energy usage, with the power draw dropping below 5 watt for the same actions. Enabling low power mode extended the screen on time dramatically, with the user obtaining 10 hours of use compared to 6.5 hours without it. The difficulty with this remedy is that low power mode affects the entire iPhone experience. It reduces the display brightness, lowers the refresh rate to 60 Hz, limits 5G connectivity, and restricts background activity. Thankfully, the iPhone 17 Pro Max battery life is outstanding as is, so owners wouldn't have to resort to using the low power mode much. However, we don't need extra time to savor the significantly faster 40 watt connected charging. Apple claims a 50% top-up in 20 minutes on the 17 Pro, up from 50% in 35 minutes on the 16 Pro. And that is indeed pretty much what we get. Keep in mind that Apple recommends its new $40 40-watt dynamic power adapter with 60-watt max that employs a new USB-C PT protocol called Adjustable Voltage Supply. Android phones often utilize a different protocol called Programmable Power Supply. The iPhone 17 does not support programmable power supply, but that's not such a big problem. If you use a third-party charger like ones from Anchor with programmable power supply, the iPhone 17 Pro will revert back to the usual charging stages on the charger, and you will only miss out on the fine grain voltage adjustments, but it will still fast charge. In other words, you will obtain approximately the same charging speed. As for wireless charging, we have 25 watt mags safe, the same as on the iPhone 16 series. Strangely, the iPhone 17 Pro audio quality has altered quite a bit from the prior model. The 17 Pro does not get nearly as loud as its predecessor, which can be disappointing. Admittedly, at those greatest volumes, the music quality was distorted, but we still enjoy having the ability to blast sound loud and clear. There are no concerns with the clarity, though, and you still have a reasonable amount of bass. All of that, of course, is expressed in the context of smartphone audio, and clearly, you would be far better suited listening to music via a speaker or headset. There are also no modifications to haptics. They feel tight and precise as usual with the Taptic engine. A lot of the benefits in the new iPhone also stem from its efficient design, combining an aluminum unibody, 
considerably more proficient at dispersing heat, and a vapor chamber cooling that quickly transports that heat away from the core. In thermal imaging, the effects are clearly visible. However, during performance tests, the iPhone 17 Pro heats up evenly across its body, whereas the previous model exhibited a significant red patch around the processor, indicating that heat dissipation was a considerable issue with the 16 series. While the iPhone 17 Pro hits roughly 42 degrees Celsius, the iPhone 16 Pro runs substantially hotter at nearly 45 degrees Celsius. You can also notice the benefit of the 17 Pro versus the glass back of the vanilla 17 model which gets hotter at approximately 44 degrees Celsius to 45 degrees Celsius. Apple has also made substantial architectural modifications to the CPU this year. It still uses 2x performance cores and 4x efficiency cores, but the little cores are largely re-engineered, and they also now run at roughly 2.6 GHz, up from 2.4 GHz last year. All of this results in fantastic single-core performance and solid multi-core figures. In GPU testing, we saw much higher increases. On 3D Mark's Solar Bay Extreme test, which is heavily focused on ray tracing, the A19 Pro GPU on the iPhone 17 Pro outperforms the one on the M3 iMac. On the 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme stress test, the initial performance was on level with the Galaxy S25, but thanks to the vapor chamber cooling, the phone is able to maintain its performance significantly better. We observe stability of around 65% to 70%. This is still not quite as excellent as specialist gaming phones, which can often attain a stability rate of 95%, meaning they throttle very rarely, but it's much closer today. You generally won't notice this in casual games, but you can really feel it if you play AAA games on your iPhone. And there seem to be more of those coming. Death Stranding and Resident Evil 4 are just some of the titles now accessible, and whereas they could barely touch 30 FPS on the iPhone 16 Pro series, you can now play them at around 50 FPS. That's tremendous improvement in just one year. The iPhone 17 Pro is powered by the new A19 Pro chipset, and the phone now also boasts 12 gigs of RAM. And while you may be used to smartphone processors being ever quicker every year, this is definitely a very large leap for both CPU and, notably, GPU performance. First, the manufacturing method for this new chip is updated, as the A19 Pro uses the TSMC N3P node versus the N3E previously. Then, the type of RAM is also upgraded. The iPhone 17 Pro now has LPDDR5X9600 RAM with a faster bandwidth of 76.8 GB per second, up from 60 GB per second on the prior Pro model. One negative of an aluminum unibody, however, is that aluminum can be scratched more easily than titanium or stainless steel. YouTuber Jerry Rejeverything illustrates that the sharp corners of the camera plateau are a weak place in particular. This will not be evident on the silver model, but it will be seen on the blue or orange ones. Don't forget that aluminum also deforms considerably more easily than titanium or steel, and we've already seen a few photographs of dropped iPhone 17 Pros with a ding on the aluminum frame. On the plus side, you now have ceramic shield for the glass insert on the rear, meaning that section will be better protected from scratches. As for the unboxing, there is nothing new here. The unboxing experience is simply like any other recent iPhone. You've got a thin package, the phone in it, a braided charging wire, and the normal usage manuals. This year, the 17 Pro enables faster 40 watt charging, but there is no charger included in the box, so you might actually need a new charging brick if you want to benefit from the quicker speeds. There is no case or pre-installed screen protector either. With a 6.3-inch ProMotion screen, the 17 Pro display size is unchanged from the previous model. The significant new feature is the improved peak brightness. All iPhone 17 models can now exceed 3,000 nits of peak brightness, and with better cooling, they don't go dim outdoors quite as fast. There is also a new 7-layer anti-reflectivity coating, which performs a better job suppressing exterior reflections. It is a very slight impact, though, nowhere near as dramatic as what we have on the S25 Ultra. Biometrics on the iPhone 17 Pro remain identical, as it employs the same Face ID sensor as in all recent iPhones. So, if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more exciting tech news and updates. 
Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.